This is Math 142. We're going to look at Section 6.2, which we're going to look at the graphs of uh, tangent, secant, um, and cosecant. So let's take a peek at those and see if we can't uh, make some sense out of them. I hope that you remember from last time we had this a times right some trig function with sine or cosine before, and then we had uh, sometimes it was written bx minus c uh, plus d, and each of these had a role. And sometimes I encourage you to factor out that b, and I I like it. I like to. Think of it that way, where this is just a number. And if you remember, we had phase shift here. We have um, just a vertical uh, displacement, vertical motion, just moves it up down. This B gave us, the, we did something with the period, right? We took the period and divided it by B. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We took, yeah, we took the period and divided it by B, and that gave us a new period. And this gave us, uh, we were calling it the amplitude, but it was a so let's think about some functions. Let's think about tangent first. So tangent is uh, y over x, or sine divided by cosine. Let me get, get a little graph up here. And let's see. So uh, y equals sine looks like this. Y equals cosine looks like this. I'm going to take a quick snap of that so I can draw on it. And so tangent, as we know, is sine over cosine. And let's see this. this uh, I think it's red one here is, is sine. And this one that looks blue to me, it could be purple. I can't tell the difference, is cosine. So let's keep sketching on there, sorry. And so notice like here and here, these values are the same. So tangent should be one. Sine divided by cosine, one divided by zero. So it should go through zero here. At pi over four, they're the same value, but they're opposite. So that should go through negative one here. Right, I'm just going sine divided by cosine. And notice what happens here when sine, when cosine is zero, I, I'm gonna go something one, basically one divided by zero, which is undefined. So I have an asymptote here. That's going to happen whenever cosine crosses the x-axis. Interesting. Be back here too. And notice what happens as this gets really, really small and this gets really, really big. This grows and gets bigger and bigger. So this shape is going to actually look a little small. There is my tangent right there. And it actually happens again and again and again. It goes through this point, uh, pi over 4, 1, because they're the same values there. Or whatever, you know, negative pi over 4. I know that's actually at pi over 4, 45 degrees. And it keeps doing that. So tangent actually has this repeated uh, legs like this. Let me graph it in Desmos and see what it looks like there it is so as i as i look at tangent i notice a couple things about it first off there's asymptotes at these every time you go over pi over two because those are places where cosine is equal to zero and it, re it repeats itself right it's periodic it does this and it does it again then it does it again so it has a period of pi. It actually repeats itself every pi. And it also always goes through this point, which is basically, you know, pi over four away from here, um, one. There's some things to, to know about tangent. So tangent, every pi over four repeats itself like this. And it always goes through this point, um, Oops, sorry, those are pi over twos. Pi over four, one. So it goes through that point and it has a period of pi. Now think about applying all of these shifts to it. In other words, if I had A times tangent of, 
I'm going to write it this way with it factored out. That's still going to move it up down. This is still going to be a phase shift, right? So that moves it left, right. Now that is speeds it up and slows it down, that B value. So the period of it, instead of being 2 pi divided by B, is pi divided by B because the period of this is pi. And then that A is a stretch. It doesn't really have an amplitude, but it has a stretch in this direction. What it does is it changes this value right here. The pi over 4 stays, um, you know, unless it gets shifted. And instead of just going up 1, it goes up A, whatever that is. Let's grab something in Desmos, take a peek at it, and see what, what happens here. So, for example, uh, notice I have this point right here, this pi over 4, 1. Eek, eek. Uh, and if I multiply this by 3, say, now notice it's way up here at 3. So that's going to stretch it this way. If I go uh, plus 2, everything moves up 2, right? Notice this now. If I multiply this by 2, it goes faster. Now my period is um, pi divided by 2. It's always pi divided by that. And then if I wanted to shift it left or right, you know, I could say, uh, plus over eight and just move it moves these values all right so that's what tangent does and that idea of we have this phase shift we something's under the period it moves up down it has a stretch it's going to work for all of these tangent secant and cosecant so let me think about the graphs of secant and cosine uh, sorry cosecant real quick one of the things we know about secant is it's one over cosine. So cosine as a graph, we know looks like this, right? Where it's up here at one, down here at negative one. And uh, this happens pi over two, three pi over two. Now, if we take these values like this, Whatever this is, let's say this is at um, root 3 over 2 or something like that. It's going to flip all these values. So all these things that are less than 1, when they flip, I mean, between 1 and 0, like if you think about the decimal uh, 0 0.9, that's 9 tenths. If you take its reciprocal, that's 10 ninths. It becomes bigger than 1. So what happens is we can't divide by 0. So we get these asymptotes here. And then we've got... It's going to go through that one, the reciprocal of one is one, but then it's going to flip this way and all these positive numbers are going to grow without bound in this way and all these negative ones are going to go this way. So secant like that. And uh, some interesting things I think about secant is um, it still has a period of pi, right? It repeats itself every pi. It goes through the point. 0, 1, so you can run your stretch off of that, right? If your A value was 7, uh, it would go through the point 0, 7. Um, and you can shift it left, right, shift it up, down, just like all the other ones. And I encourage you to play with Desmos to think about that. So secant looks like that. If I just graph secant on its own, you can see what it looks like. You can see what those asymptotes are. And hopefully... Uh, cosecant, since you know that cosecant is uh, 1 over sine, those asymptotes just happen where sine is 0. And it's the same sort of shape because all those, all those values got flipped as well. So sine, you know, looks like this. So, so cosecant looks like this. And I'm going to say it's all the same stuff with the A stretch. Uh, notice this point right here, though, instead of being um, 0, 1, is pi over 2, 1. And this also has a period of pi. So you divide that, uh, divide that pi by b to get the period if you're doing um, compression on it or stretches. So we again, we, this a, we're not going to call it an amplitude like we did before because it's not an amplitude. It's just a stretch, up-down stretch. 
And what I'm going to encourage you to do is um, play around with Desmos. But what happens if I multiply this by three? Oh, it makes it go three times as faster. It makes the period pi over three. Um, what happens if I add five out here? It moves it up down five, right? My midline's at five and it's one away from that. And then if I double this, it'll stretch it two away from that five. So play around with it. Look at the um, practice problems in the chapter and um, message me with any questions and or post them in the forum.